Hello there, and welcome to the first quick start video on Cubase 9. We're going to start with two really simple concepts, installing Cubase and activating the software using the eLicenser control center. Let's install Cubase first. So I'm going up to the start installation icon and double clicking. If you purchase the software in a box, it might be useful for you to search for an update so that you've always got the latest version. I'm going to continue along. Before installing the software, make sure you read through the software licensing agreement, select continue, and then agree if you're happy with the terms of the agreement. You can change the install location and also customize your install, but I would recommend going with the standard install. I've sped this installation up for demonstration purposes, but it will now take some time for Cubase to be installed onto your computer system. While you're waiting, why not go to the My Steinberg section on the Steinberg webpage and set yourself up with an account. It's really important for things like software updates and news, registration, and of course, support if anything should go wrong. The installation process will install the Cubase application, the included content, and the eLicenser control center. Once the installation is successful, plug in your blue eLicenser and start up the eLicenser control application. There's a really useful video on how to activate the software and use the eLicenser application on the eLicenser website. So please go and check that out if this is your first time using the application. Once you've entered your code, it's time to start Cubase and get on with using the software and being creative. As soon as you launch Cubase, you'll be prompted to select your audio device. If you don't have one, don't worry about that just yet. The first time Cubase starts up, it'll take a little bit of time to scan your system for plugins. But when it does start up, you'll be presented with the Steinberg Hub. On the left-hand side of the Steinberg Hub, you've got news and information on Steinberg products. You've also got loads of tutorials to help you get started and even work your way further into Cubase. On the right-hand side, we can access recent files or we can go through the many templates that Steinberg provide. We can also load our own and save our own templates. Today, we're going with an empty project. File management is really important with Cubase and that's because we're working with a number of different types of files. So down the bottom, I can use a default location and I can set that default location or I can select prompt for project location. And this means every time I create a project, I'll be asked where I would like to save all of these different types of files. As soon as we've set that project location, we've got an empty Cubase project in front of us. Before we move on to the next video, we're going to do one of the most important things in audio recording, and that is to save our project. So I'm selecting file, save, and I'm giving the project a name. Now, as soon as I hit save, I can go back to that project location that I said earlier, and you can see that I've got a Cubase file there. That's a project file that contains all of the information on the project. And I've also got an audio folder, and that will contain any audio files that I record. And as we start to build this project, we'll start to see other folders appear in this folder structure, and I'll explain them as we go. Stay tuned. In video two, we're going to have a really good look around the project window. I'll see you there.